the things that matter to you are your values and everything else is just noise it's just snow it's just debris it's just stuff it's just there hey welcome to the tsl podcast and here we have a short clip from greg swan talking about dating being a man and being a better expression of yourself really really good advice and of course check out the entire podcast and don't forget to support greg uh, selfadoration.com you can get all sorts of articles and stuff that he's written and check him out at the 21 convention as well because he's been a speaker there and it's it's pretty amazing uh, don't forget if you're listening to this on itunes or you're watching it on youtube subscribe uh, show some sport go to the sexuallife.com sign up on our newsletter uh, you're going to get tons of awesome stuff that is uh, basically uh, your guide to the evolution of being the better man that's what this podcast is all about it's to empower you if you really want to step it up check out the better man's guide to dating and lifestyle amazing source of just dating personal evolution self-exploration and if you really want to turn it on TSL online at home intensive Let's get into the podcast. Check it out. What do you see guys today where they really need help? Frankly, uh, the one thing I would pick would be the relationship with women um, and really ultimately the father relationship where I would say that all of the roles that guys are taking in their romantic relationships, really practically speaking after engagement they're dropping the ball and in dropping the ball they're really throwing away everything they've been fighting for that when a romantic relationship starts you meet the girl she doesn't <clears throat> meet you you meet the girl even if she thinks that she arranged the meeting it nothing happened until you noticed her and as soon as you noticed her then all of a sudden you were on your game you were trying to get that phone number you're trying to get a date you're trying to go out you're trying to trying to get to first base second base you're trying to score you are driving this. The guy is driving this relationship. The male is driving this relationship. And everything that happens in that romantic relationship until engagement, until marriage, or until sometime relatively soon after marriage, the guy is going to be driving everything. He's going to be the driver in that relationship. And then at some point, he lets go of the wheel. He decides to, to lose control, to, to leave, you know, to stop driving. He decides to stop driving. He is the driver. He is the one who's going to say, no, we're going to do this instead of that. No, we're going to live on the other side of the hill because the sunlight is better and we'll have a better farm there. Um, this is what the man does in a relationship, and it doesn't matter what time of history or what socioeconomic level people have achieved. I mean, we live in a very modern world. Nobody has to move to the other side of the hill to get better sunlight <clears throat> now, not in the United States, but the father still has to be dominant in that relationship. And if he lets go of that dominance, if he stops driving that marriage, um, so he sits back in his easy chair and takes a snooze or watches the ball game or just drinks beer after beer after beer. He's not committed. He doesn't offer anything. He doesn't, he doesn't move the relationship, but he also doesn't permit it to be moved. He's basically an anchor on that relationship because she cannot. It's dusty. Um, she cannot be the leader of that relationship. She cannot dominate him. Uh, not for long and not well. She can do it by screaming or throwing tantrums or giving ultimatums, but um, in the long run, it won't work. I mean, natural, natural leadership doesn't work that way. Natural leadership says, we're going to do this, and everybody says, hop to it. We're going to do that. Um, if he has to yell at her to get things done, it's not working, but that's not the way a marriage works. He doesn't have to do that when he's driving the relationship. All he has to do is keep driving and she'll go where he goes. But she can't do that. She can't drive him. And so if he's not willing to assert that moral leadership in the marriage, it's going to fail. They may stay married for 50 <clears throat> years, but the marriage is not going to work. It's not going to be that kind of half marriage. I like what you said about the interview you did last night about having seven priorities. This is the way that People who get things done, get things done, is by putting things in priority. And as far as I'm concerned, your number one priority is yourself, but your number two priority is going to be your family, is going to be your spouse, your children, um, your extended family after that, your friends after that, your job, your hobbies or things like that, your intellectual avocations. All of those things are going to be fairly down on the list. But once you get to item number seven, 
if item number seven is not something deeply important to you, there are only six things on your list. And if item number six is not deeply important to you, there are only five things on your list. The things that matter to you are your values, and everything else is just noise. It's just snow. It's just debris. It's just stuff. It's just there. And we spend all of our time listening to people tell us to focus on this or focus on that or worry about this or worry about that, worry about things that you don't really worry about and that you don't do anything about. And one, one way you have of knowing if you really care about something is look at what you're doing. If you're not doing anything, you don't care. If all you're doing is bitching, you don't care. If all you're doing is worrying, you don't care. If all <clears throat> you're doing is nothing, you don't care. And the things that you care about are the things that you're doing something about. And the things that you're doing something about, you should be dancing. That when you're doing them, they should be delightful to you. And anything that you're doing that isn't delightful to you, you should either stop doing it or figure out why. But if it's not delightful, if it's, if it's burdensome to you, if it's hateful to you, if it makes you hate your life, don't do it. The things that make you love your life, that make you... That you do this and you feel like you're literally dancing, that you're, even if you're just sweeping the kitchen floor, but you're dancing your way through it like Cinderella because you're happy to be alive and you know you're advancing your values. You know that you're moving the ball down the field, that you're advancing your true values. And if you concern yourself with that, if you do things that way, your life will work. But in your marriage, it's the same way that why did you chase her in the first place? Why did you chase her so avidly in the first place? And why aren't you chasing her now? So as you can see, pretty intense, man. You know, um, I, I always love talking to Greg because he's such a passionate guy. Definitely check him out, selfadoration.com, and go to thesexuallife.com. Subscribe to our newsletter. Uh, get on the list and, and get a part of this proactive movement where you can evolve to be the better man.